Gal and Siobhan Muir. And today we are going to make another budget friendly meal, chicken pot pie. Now it's, when I say budget friendly, um, I'm going to basically use canned vegetables and you know canned chicken. You don't have to make too much from scratch, but it is more cost effective to make your own crust, especially if you need gluten free. So I have actually made my own crust. Um, it, it looks like this. It's really simple. It's basically three quarters of a cup of butter, a, cup, a quarter cup of milk, and two uh, cups of flour. Mix it together, roll it out, and you've got a crust. It's more budgetary wise. Just get flour, butter, and a little bit of milk, and you're good to go. If you want to buy pre-made crusts, you can. Um, they are. I think we decided they were like a, they were two dollars. And 18 cents or two dollars and 32 cents at Walmart they're in the frozen section they are not gluten-free though so if you need it to be gluten-free it's just more cost-effective to make your own crust than which is what we did based on the cost I took a look at it uh, making your own crust if you use regular old flour you, you're not gluten sensitive it came out to flour was the equivalent of like 25 cents total plus whatever the cost of butter is what like a buck 50 in butter and your milk is Maybe another like because you only need a quarter cup of milk so it's not even very much sense. so it's it's less than the pre-made crust but it's an option yeah so that's that's what we did for for making our crust because we need it to be gluten-free you can do it non-gluten-free and um, it's actually cheaper to do it non-gluten-free mm -hmm. however you know you only <coughs> you need milk and butter so and of course we use the Bob's Red Mill for, for our crust. But if you don't want to, you can get a pre-made crust, not a big deal. Um, and they aren't terribly expensive, it's just that um, it's actually cheaper. It just takes time. The, what, the expense is not money, it's time. Okay. Yeah, you can keep track. All right, so what we're going to do is, originally we, we used this as our template. It was the hearty pot pie from American Classic. Years ago, I would receive random recipes in the mail. I don't even know how I got signed up for them, but they would periodically show up in the mail. I'm like, oh, that's okay, so I saved it. But I never used it until about 10 years ago, and then I went, you know what, maybe I'll make a chicken pot pie. <laughs> and then I read the, the recipe, and I'm kind of like, well, I'm gonna change that, and I'm gonna change that. And, well, it's a good template. <laughs> but. So what it is, is basically you need um, a, they said, one can of cream of chicken soup. Now, this is the, this is 68 cents at your Walmart. It's really cheap to get. However, we found out the hard way that it's not gluten free. And we were like, I didn't even think that cream of chicken soup. It makes sense, it's cream of, so they probably add things like flour. And so we read it and we went, oh, there's actually flour in here. Mm -hmm. So we decided to look for a gluten-free alternative and they have it. Now this is 68 cents, and this is a buck 72. It's gluten-free, so they use rice flour instead of uh, regular flour. You can use either one and still be pretty low cost, but if you have to go gluten-free, like it's really important, you can find this in the gluten-free section at Walmart, and um, it's only a dollar more. And today's the first time we're going to actually try this. Yeah, we're so. going to use this one instead to see how it does, so because the murelets are uh, yep. gluten-free. So there's that. Okay, so you'll need so some okay. soup. Um, it says one and one-third cups divided. We changed the recipe, so we're not using water. I don't think. Did nope. you add any water with nope, this thing? Nope, I don't add water to this. I just basically use this when I cook all of this together. That way it just creates a nice creamier sauce rather than something a little runny. Okay, you're going to need an onion. This is the one thing you'll probably have to do from scratch. Everything else is canned, but you can do this one. This one you're going to have to do from scratch. And you saute the onions. And that's where you get the olive oil, which is two tablespoons of olive oil, and you saute a medium-sized onion. And you just cook it up until it's, until it's soft. Okay, I'm just giving you the ingredients first, and then we'll take you through the steps. Um, then you can get canned peas and canned carrots. 
really cheap. Um, I think the peas we found were, I didn't write them down. I think the, cheap, the peas were uh, like 88 cents, same with the carrots. They're all probably less than a buck. Yeah, and, and you know, and these are these are packed with salt, so make sure you rinse them. Otherwise, your your chicken pot pie is going to be really salty. You don't want it. The soup is going to provide enough salt. Plus, we we're going to add a spice to it, so you don't need it. Then, um, whether you do it from scratch or not, usually we cook our own carrots. But mm -hmm. just get canned potatoes. It's so much easier. <laughs> I mean, you know, you. You know, throw them in there and call it good. It's really, even whether you're making it from scratch or not. And another alternative that I just thought of is if you are sensitive to sugar and rinsing is still not enough, you can probably go frozen. Salt. Oh, sorry. That's what I meant. Salt. <laughs> sorry. Brain doesn't work today. Um, yeah, if you're really sensitive to salt, you could probably find uh, frozen carrots and frozen peas. And sometimes they have the mixes of peas and carrots together. Done. You don't even have to worry about getting separate ones. It might be comparable in price, it might be a little more, but that's an option. Right, and you won't have to use the entire package, too. You could probably get away with half of it, because uh, they usually come in bags. Okay, so then, and then we we got, um, you know, chicken chunk, chicken breast chunks in a, in a can. It's really easy, it's already cooked, and you don't have to do hardly any work. Again, this is... What we're going to basically do is heat everything up, mix it together, and then throw it in the pie crust. That's really what this is all about. And it, that means it's relatively fast and easy. Like on a, on a really busy work night, throw this stuff together, heat it up a little bit, throw it in the pie crust, call it good. Seriously, it is. It not only is it a budget meal, but it's fast. Okay, now are you going to use both of these, do you think? We'll see. Um, I think what it'll be is when we drain everything off and we cook it in the pan, I'm gonna see how much space is there. Right. And so um, we'll go from there. I think we're only gonna need one. But I think so too. I think we'll have enough for just one, but so. in case we do have two, and these cans, um, they were, yeah, they were, how much were they? They were 12.5 ounces. And this set right here was like six bucks. But I went and looked at Walmart, and you can just get one of these things for as low as two eighteen. Mm -hmm. We did find, you know, it, it's not the fanciest, but you can get this. And this one's in um, just in water, fully cooked. So you'll drain them and put them together. All right. So, what are you going to do first? Well, ideally, if you're making your own crust, make the crust. Mm -hmm. But. Since I already took care of that, and because it's it's a long, you know, watch me roll it all out. Um, <laughs> um, it's already made. So what we're going to do first is we're going to chop up, um, not fine, but kind of uh, coarsely chop up the onion and saute it in uh, olive oil, right? And on your YouTube channel, you already have a video of. How you made a, your own homemade crust. Yes, so. it's with the pumpkin pie recipe. So if you wanted to know how to make the crust, it's really simple. Um, but you can see it there already. If I do it again, I will show it to you when I make a different kind of pie. I'm hoping to make the strawberry pie. But not today. We're taking it making a chicken pot pie. So peel the onion and then chop it up. Do you yeah. Trying to peel it, and that way we can just throw it out. The cutting board is behind us; it's all ready to go. And, and we're gonna coarsely chop the onion. Trash behind you. There we go. I'm gonna move this way. Okay. So chop it. Oops, sorry, beautiful. Do you need something? Nope, I'm good. Just check. All right. You can chat while I cut. And don't worry if onions make you cry. We understand. <laughs> yep. We're all big softies, aren't we? That's right. That's right. So I cut them about quarter inch to half inch in thickness. And then I just sort of cube them. Because you're going to end up stirring them in the pot anyway, and they'll break apart. And, so, and then you saute them. And I don't think you either add anything other than the oil, do you? Nope. I just add the oil. That's it. And then let me go and 
I can finish that off. You want to finish more? Sure. Or you think that's enough for today's meal? No, no, I would use the whole onion. Again, it comes down to practicality. I, it, like in one of the other recipes, I used the whole egg. I didn't separate the whites. Mm -mm. Use the whole egg. It's practicality. And also, being budget conscious, use as much of the food as possible because you can always have leftovers yep. and, or you can set it aside and make another meal. Yep. And this one, this usually feeds us for about two days. Mm -hmm. So. And that's for that's, people that, for adults. Yep. Because the Neurolids are eating like adults. So now, technically, you're supposed to do two tablespoons. The master chef knows what he's doing, and so yes, two tablespoons where you start. After that, I'm pretty sure you can, you know, eyeball it. Mm -hmm. I usually try and put down on the bottom about a good two half dollar sizes of oil. You want enough to just be able to start cooking and sauteing. You don't need it to brown and crisp in the onion. You just need it to have enough so that it just starts to sizzle. And what did you set your what your your stove at? Ah, the stove. The stove for this recipe is at 425 degrees. Uh, Not at the baking. For the stove. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I usually cook everything on medium. That way, I have a little more control as to how fast things will cook and how things will break down. So, sorry, I usually set it, our stove sets it at five, five is our medium, so I go from there. I do apologize. <laughs> I misunderstood. <laughs> stove, not oven. It's all the same. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay. So I put some oil in, not a whole lot, but I spread it around on the bottom and then throw in the onions. Oops, I lost some, so I guess we won't be using those. Uh, no, the colorful one, please. And then while that starts to heat up, we can start draining the other vegetables. The potatoes um, come whole, right? Most of them are tiny, but they're still going to be too big to be bite-sized. So we usually cut them into quarters, anywhere from half to quarters. And that way it, it kind of goes with the same shape as the onions. They're about the same size. So you're getting all the vegetables together. Yeah, so... so so in these, we won't even do them in quarters. They'll be small, more diced than that because they're really big. Probably eights. Yeah, at least. Quarter, quarter. Okay, so basically what he's doing right now is he's pouring the vegetables into a big colander because they're full of salt. And you, we want to be kind of careful with that. What we're doing is we're going to pour them in there and then rinse them, and then they'll end up in here. But first, we are sauteing these onions. Oh, and they're smelling good. They smell so good. Doesn't it look good? Yep, it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to get nice and soft and clear. Next will be, while this is going, if you can watch that, I will cut up the yep. potatoes real quick. I'll keep an eye on it. And because the potatoes are pretty much already cooked, they're pretty soft, so when I cook this, I always add it last. Because if I add it in when everything else is sauteing together, I find that the potatoes get really mushy. Right, and understand that we de generally make, because it's more cost effective, we generally make the, the carrots from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we chop up the carrots and throw them in with the onions to kind of soften them to start with before we add in the peas, the soup, and the potatoes. I mean, next up is we drain off the chicken. Okay. And the only thing I don't drain off or rinse with um, off water is the actual chicken. Uh, I like having a little bit of salt. That way you don't have to add an extra amount of salt or or whatnot. The thing about a lot of pre-made chicken pot pies is they're extremely salty. And so with that, are you draining off the, ah, okay. So, but other than that, let me check on this real quick. 
Alright, the onions are looking pretty good. The onions are somewhat softened. Yeah, that way it starts to warm up and then we throw the, the veggies in and then... Let me give you a little. Yep. Make sure the pieces are relatively small and I want to get the rest of them. And I can always start breaking them up too. That works. That's perfect. These are good sizes. I think honestly, maybe we do want a second can just because it's a little more protein. Oh, well, we could. Okay. It's up to you. I'm perfectly happy with that. All right, let's throw the second can in this time. Yeah, I think so. Especially if you're you're feeding adults. Yeah, and I used a slightly larger onion than medium, so what the heck. But in total, I mean, what, if we calculate out the cost of your pre-made crust there, Siobhan, that's about two bucks. You said the canned chicken was about... Six dollars for, for two. For two, yeah. And then the couple cans of veggies, that's about another four. So, in total, we're looking at about a $12 meal that will serve a family of four. Two days. At least two meals. Yeah. And then... I mean, if you wanted to go with the gluten-free um, soup mix, then you're looking at, what, I said $10 for the meal, so 12, so 14, $15 for total. a family of four total. Gluten-free. Gluten-free. Yeah. I mean, can't go wrong with that. No, and you're not going to find a full, a, a chicken pot pie this size at a restaurant for less than, say, 40 or $50. So you're already got a two, two sets of... Add a little more oil. Okay. So I'm starting to notice that I'm browning, and I don't want to brown too much. I got everything. Perfect, good looking, perfect. All right, let's grab the carrots and the peas and throw them in. And I will start the oven. And what do you set your oven at? The oven is at 425 uh, Fahrenheit or approximately, uh, I think it was 218 centigrade. Okay. Let's grab that. Oh, I'm making a little bit of a mess. Well, what's any good cook? They don't make a mess. Okay. We can put that in the sink. All right, let's throw this together. Um, and you can add whatever veggies you want to add um, extra. I personally, I just like simple onions, carrots, peas, a little bit of meat, and potatoes. And potatoes. And the potatoes, I think, are our addition to the recipe. Nope. Nope? No, the original recipe said that. Okay. Let's grab the potatoes. Yeah. Three medium red potatoes scrubbed and diced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pre-cooked. Pre-cooked. <laughs> yep. Alrighty. Throw that in the sink. Starting to smell pretty good. All right, go ahead and put that in there. Good looking. Okay, so the next thing you do is you just add the soup, and re again, we're using the gluten free, and it just comes out kind of like glop. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is this provides a lot of flavor that you wouldn't have to, that you would have to normally you know put together yourself and why do that it's supposed to be simple and inexpensive and you can't do that if you have to make everything from scratch yes will it taste better maybe maybe not these end up tasting really good yep so this will be an experiment
And all I do is I just stir it in so that it coats everything. Um, now, spicing. Like with the quickie chicken, use what you have available. What smells good, what tastes good. Um, a general sort of like allspice or blend, like Mrs. Dash will work. Um, for us, again, because I have a pretty well-stocked pantry of spices, I use a Hungarian style of allspice that is basically the same thing. It's called Vegeta. It is... Um, we keep actually, it in a parsley flakes bottle, but it's it's Vegeta, and it's from... I think it's from... Is it Croatia? Where is it from? I think it's a Croatian. It's an Eastern European spice, and... But it's basically the same thing as Mrs. Dash. That's it. And Mrs. Dash costs about $3 for a, for a jar, that, and it lasts forever. You do not have to use the whole jar. Nope. You're just using a little bit of it. And if you want something that's got a little different of a flavor, I mean, the nice thing about this is it has some dehydrated onions, so a little bit of dehydrated carrots, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of a, a little extra. And frankly, you don't need a lot. Um, so. Well, that's a half tea tablespoon, so let's go with, I mean, at most, maybe a teaspoon. Yeah, I think for the whole pie, yeah. I mean, and just sprinkle it in. I mean, if you like a little more spice, just go ahead, add in your, you know, whatever, cayenne, curries, whatever. Pepper. Pepper. Salt, I mean, you don't need the salt. Honestly, you don't need the salt because the chicken by itself already has enough. Um, and so does the, the soup. The cream of chicken soup has yep. salt in it too. And then, I think it's done. What do you think, Shimon? How's it smell to you? Yeah, it smells pretty good. All right, that's it. So let's pour this into this pie crust. All right. It worked out pretty good to have the extra can of chicken. It did. I it think it's it gonna out. be a knife. N enough. <laughs> enough. Especially because what, this is like a 10, 12 inch pan? Uh, no, mine is, I think it's a nine. Okay. Ten? So, so if you're doing a smaller one, then yes, definitely one can is more than enough. Um, but if you're doing a large pie crust, Or pie. Pie fill, um, pan. Again, if it's pre-made though, if, if the crust is pre-made, you go with what it's got. Yeah. So if it's sized for, you know, an eight inch pan, there you go, we'll move. <laughs> Nicely done. Since we have extra, Since you like doing designs, I'm bringing you a knife. Oh, thank you. In the recipe, they show a picture of someone using scissors to um, trim the trim the crust, and I'm like, really? Scissors? It should tear pretty easily, and then you can move things around and add crust to places. This is where you get a little on the fancy side. Start building your crust so that the pie comes together. All right, so this is the way you do it. Now, to make that fancy dancy crust that looks oh so professional, it's really tough. Watch this. Just breaking the bank in that molding. I know. So professional, so difficult. Basically, you leave fingerprints in your in your uh, crust. That's it. The nice thing about a homemade crust is it's light and flaky. It is. And 
there, nothing beats a butter and flour crust. It just doesn't. All right. I'm just being a disaster in the kitchen, like I normally am. Okay, so we are still waiting for the for the oven to heat up, but now on the front of this, they just made a big hole in their chicken pot pie. No, why would you do that? Um, but you can put any design on your your pot pie. You can you can if you, can you if you if you're good enough, you can design a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a star, you can put a smiley face, you can, you know, just put a big X, whatever you want to do. Um, it's pretty easy to do a design. What, do you, what would you like? I don't know. I was going to say, what calls to you today? Hmm. I don't think I'm good enough to do the Mandalorian. <laughs> the Mandalorian's hat, helmet. I would be impressed if you could, but... That might be a challenge accepted. <laughs> you know, we might have to just go find you a cookie cutter just for that one. Mm. Well then. Do, you, do you a simple star. Okay. And Chabelle, why do you cut this? You always cut your pie crust. Always cut your pie crust so it, it to leave vents. Otherwise, you could have an explosion in your oven, and you really don't want it to do that. So, leaving it to have vents all over the pie allows the steam and every all the water to escape, and the, the pie to cook evenly. Um, it also keeps it from being soggy. It allows the heat to, to dissipate. There you go, start. Yeah. It's not centered, but I don't care. It's the vents are fine. <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna work it's fine. Day. But you know, ta -da. it's dark. Looks good. Works. Mm -hmm. Alright, so once the oven is ready, which should be soon. Um once the oven is ready, then you cook it in the oven at again. 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius and you cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's actually a really fast, once you put this thing together and throw it in the oven, it's a really fast meal and it's really good in winter time because it's hearty, it's warm, the oven heats up the house, everything's great. So um, this is often something we make at, in winter but you know, Again, it's really simple, it's really fast, you throw it in the oven, you're good. And so it's budget friendly, mm -hmm. it's time friendly. As you see, we just had it, dumped everything in, stirred it around, cooked it a little bit, and threw it in, the, in a crust. Very easy for, for families and people on the go. Shoot, even if you don't have any family, you could make this for yourself and you could eat it for days. Yep. And it stays delicious in the, in the um, fridge for three or four days, although ours never last that long <laughs> because we have so many people. But, all right, so we're gonna put this in. We're gonna cook it for, we're gonna start with 20 minutes. We'll check it and then see where how it goes, so. Okay, so we'll see you in 20 minutes. Check. We should check. We should see what this looks like. Oh, it looks really good. What do you think? Would you do it longer? I'd brown your crust a little bit longer. Okay. Or maybe like two minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, we're going to end up doing it for two more minutes, but only to brown the crust. The thing is probably well cooked all the way through. And because we put in things that were prepared out of cans, they're already cooked. So you're not going to have any of the problems of like botulism or any of that because the, the items that went in, no matter how hot or how cold they are, they are fully cooked already. Yeah, and cooking it a little bit on the stove top, got it right this time, um, <laughs> makes it, you know, you already brought up the temperature of the food to at least warm so that the oven doesn't have to work harder. Right, and um, most of this is because we drain everything, you're not going to have a lot of excess water. This isn't going to be a soupy pie um, because we drained everything and we, we put it together. So 
smoky good. It smells really good. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that new sauce. Me too. I'm excited to see what the gluten-free um, condensed soup is going to taste like. Yeah, I mean, I think on the non-glutenated side, I mean, you're looking at roughly 10 bucks, 12 bucks for a meal for four, for at least with leftovers, um, to maybe up to 15 gluten-free. Yeah. I mean, that's not much. No, it's not much. And given the size of the pie that we're making, it's pretty big. And um, that's a couple of meals. And he, again, if you're just making it for yourself, you've got at least a week's worth of meals, especially, mm -hmm. and especially if you're on a tight budget. Yeah. And uh, we know tight budgets. We regret things. <laughs> I mean, even to the point of, I mean, having two growing kids, mm -hmm. I mean, food has to stretch. So finding ways to expand it has always been a challenge. Yeah. So, oh, we got 12 seconds. Uh, all right. It smells really good. Yeah, I'll just put it right on the cookie sheet. Or cooling sheet. Crack. Whatever. You're the baker. I'm the cook. Well, this is the combo, isn't it? He cooked it, but I made the crust, which is a big thing. Oh. I just broke part of the crust. Oh well. It is light and flaky. It is. Ooh, it smells really good. Nicely done. Yeah. Um, you can serve it hot. You can. I would recommend letting it cool for five to ten minutes. Just so that when you cut into it, you don't burn your tongue. Because the contents will be hot. From the from the baking, yeah. and what I've noticed is if you let it cool a little bit, it solidifies the core a little more. If you cut it hot, all of a sudden that open space allows everything to ooze out, and then the whole thing collapses. I mean, if you want bits and pieces, by all means, I think it would work just fine. Yeah, yeah, but if you want it to look more like a pie slice, um, you want to let it cool a little bit. Um, also, because it's for handling purposes as well. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to let it. We're going to let it cool just a little bit, and then we will cut a slice and put it on the put on a plate. We usually we often eat it out of bowls so that everything's contained. But you know what? It's more visible on a plate. Yeah, it's more presentable. It is more presentable. So um, we'll be back in just a little bit, about ten minutes, to let it cool. Okay, so it didn't come out pretty, but you have the crust, you have all the goodies and the vegetables. Ooh, and it smells good. But yeah, what piece of... Mm. Might be a little salty. Really? Might be a little salty. Mm -hmm. Smells good though. What would you do to increase the salt? Then? Not as much vegetarian? Probably. Maybe just spice it with oops. <clears throat> spice it with yeah, spices um, with spices rather than yeah, maybe the Mrs. throw Dash. a little bit of garlic, a little bit of like maybe even oregano and mm. it's not bad, but it's, it's a little. Not too much, and it might actually be a little bit in the soup too. That's what I was thinking. It's the soup. The soup, and plus the chicken. Maybe it's too much of both. But I think it's good overall. I think it's really. Tasty. I think it's really tasty. It's a success. Yeah, it's light and flaky. Mm -hmm. and be yummy. That's gonna be a good dinner. Mm -hmm. We're gonna enjoy that. The only other thing I can think of is maybe rinsing off the vegetables more than just like once one fresh run through of water or rinse off the chicken no you wouldn't i don't i usually like to have a little bit of the salt on the chicken but i think next time because we normally do everything from scratch mm -hmm. so the fresh the fresh uh, peas or frozen peas the carrots and so on i think next time if i were to do it by can i would rinse out those individually a couple times and then run them together and you know, also you can find the frozen peas and carrots together, and that would probably have no salt on it, 
and that, but and then you don't even have to worry about buying no. the two different cans. You could just get a bag of frozen peas and carrots. Yeah. But uh, anyway, quick and easy, hearty meal that tastes pretty good. Um, you just have to watch the salt co quotient. You know, it becomes a little tricky sometimes. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. um, definitely subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so that you know when new videos come up. And uh, like the video. Helps the algorithms, you know. Mm -hmm. Just in case people want to see them. And um, yeah, happy mm -hmm. making, happy baking, happy eating, and happy reading. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye -bye.